Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and today we are going to do um, an ice cream cone. Now I don't normally, I can't remember painting food very much. Uh, I think I did some lemons a couple times last year, maybe some oranges, but I thought we got out one of the cards from the color cube um, and I pulled out some of my color pen watercolor pencils and I have my core palette. Um, I, I did the best I could, never mind the blues down here, that was for another video, swatching out these colors to get as close to these as I could. Um, once again, I'm using these cards as a guide, not, um, not a hardcore uh, palette. So if I feel like doing a little mixing up of colors and whatnot, I will. Uh, I figured going as close as I could was a really good start. I went ahead and sketched the, uh, the cone out and the hand. The hand was really hard. And um, pencil using my mechanical pencil. Um, I'm going to provide the line art for you guys. So it's linked below. And I'm just using Legion 100% um, cotton. 140-pound uh, cold press watercolor paper. This is one of my favorite watercolor papers, and I got a pad of it in an art box, so I thought we would go ahead and um, give it a whirl with the colored pencil, or the watercolor pencils. Now, I've never done a watercolor pencil piece before, um, and I have my set of 120 uh, Castellite Arts watercolor pencils that I got last year, so that's what these guys are. Um, this set was um, one of my Merry Christmas, early Merry Christmas to me presents. <coughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say to start. I have my um, Princeton Neptune round number eight brush. I may grab a firmer brush once we get going. I'm not too sure about that yet. This is a reference photo from uh, Pixabay. I will link the reference photo below. The, she took the reference photo and it looks like she, because I couldn't find the one with the, this color background, the color background in the reference photo for this exact cone is um, has a black background. But I mean, if you guys wanna wanna do a little freeze frame that you can. I'm going to set that off to the side um, as a guide and I'm going to kind of go crazy and, and create my own little little situation here. I would like to start... what is happening over here? Oh, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Oh, I can mess with that later. All right, so we're gonna start with the core watercolor palettes because I just I just want to get a light layer on the paper. I'm gonna use the Naples yellow and maybe a bit of Quinn Gold just to put in a light light um, base color. Mm, I'm not tipping down the paper. I'm not intending to work super wet. I'm debating, do I want to spray this, do I not? Yes? No. No. We're going to use, we're going to use just water. And I'm going to go right over the hands. I had to think about that. With a nice light, wherever it's, I need it to be white. I'm not going to wet the paper. Um, around the cone. Now, if you, I'm just not worried about buckling right now. We're going to put down this layer and then I'm going to drop in color and blow dry, heat tool, not blow dry, heat tool the the surface of the paper so that it's nice and dry for when we go in with the uh, colored pencils. So I want the colored pencils to be, um, I'd like to have nice control over them. Okay, 
Let's grab our Naples Yellow. And these are core watercolors. They move really nicely on the page. They, they're just really nice. And this Naples Yellow, I thought, was a good start, a good base color right in there to get rolling on this piece. I'm hoping to keep this tutorial at around a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, maybe, maybe. Just gently, gently drop in. Naples yellow. Kind of want it to be a little splotchy and unfinished around the outside edges. I want the cone to be the focal point of the piece. Let's drop in there and here. Got a little, a little bit on my comb. If you get paint where you don't want it to be, just don't panic. Just get a piece of paper towel or a, a nice cloth and and blot. If it's a little too wet for you, just blot, 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 blot. There we go. And then finish up this side. Over here. The base cut on that hand. And then there we go. I'd like a little pink in here too. I'm gonna grab magenta. And if you don't want a background, if you want to just um, skip ahead to the watercolor pencil part, um, I fully encourage that. There we go. How's that look for a background? Yeah, that's nice. Well, two yellow right here. Soften that out a bit. And then a little gentle blot. Create an interesting background like so. There. And there's our background. Done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And we have a nice base down for the hand. And then I think I would actually like a little bit of a base for the cone. But not the ice cream. I don't want the ice cream to be... I want the ice cream to have a nice fresh feel to it because the top scoop is strawberry and the bottom scoop is vanilla it looks like. So, just drop in a light wash, way too much water, light wash of this beige color. Like 
ça. And that is a nice start to our cone. A little too bold though because the cone has some pinks in it and a little bit of um, there's a few sections where it's pretty light. There we go. There's our our base colors in watercolor. We'll clean our brush and set it down for a little while. And I'm going to take a heat tool to this and dry it completely and then we're going to start in on the um, at the top of the ice cream and then we're going to work on the um, cone and then the hand and yeah and call it good. So one second. Okay there's a little bit sorry about the camera wobble of a warp in my page because I didn't tape it down so if um, if that bothers you, if your page does that when you dry it, it's a little warped. You can always um, work on a blocked piece of paper, which is always really nice, or um, <clears throat> a heavier paper. 300 pound paper is really good if you don't want to stretch paper. It's a little more expensive though. I tend to save my 300 pound paper for um, pieces that I, I really, really want to turn out. Like, I pray to God that they turn out amazing. <laughs> um, pretty sure we're not going to need the core watercolors anymore, so we're going to set those aside. And then, I haven't used, so these don't roll around too much. I'm going to go ahead and set them on the paper towel. It will also help hinder some noise when I pick them up and set them down. Okay, I'm going to start with the pink and the white um, interchangeably because I feel like I'm going to zoom in so you can see the cone. Let's scooch this stuff over. There we go. Um, now I've never, like I said, really used watercolor pencils in the way in which they're meant to be used as a watercolor medium. So this is me um, seeing what happens, practicing. Go in on, our, on some of this and put in some nice heavy white. And then go over the top with our pink and maybe it will give me that glazed look right when I get the water on there to smooth all the color out. Now some, I'm not a big strawberry ice cream person, but some strawberry ice creams are dyed a little darker than others. Um, so I may take a little bit of liberty with the depth of pink color on this particular part of the ice cream. Down into here. And I I'm pretty sure, relatively certain, <laughs> that um, the lines will go away when I wet this, but we don't want to use a lot of water. Learn that with the Neocolor 2s. You want to use minimal water and just glaze the surface to kind of blend them together and that yeah see that soften that right out beautiful all right cool I was legitimately concerned about that so just gently glazing over the top of that pencil to maneuver the pigment around Let's 
So, oh, I get two for a down of my vanilla. Like that. Nice. Okay, I dig it. Smooth that right out and blended that white and um, pink together nicely. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and put down a little bit of layer of white. Pretty quick. Pretty, pretty quick. Nice evenish layer on the pink part. I haven't had an ice cream cone in forever. <coughs> when I, well, uh, this summer I had ice cream um, when my Aunt Linda and Gladys wanted ice cream. I would go down to DB's, drive over to the ta it well, used to be called the Tasty Freeze when we were kids, um, but it's called DB's now. Um, ice cream parlor in town. Small town, super small town, Weedsport. It's just a little speck in uh, New York State. I grew up there and uh, did go over and get us all ice creams to enjoy while we were playing cards. Alright, that's the layer of white and then we're going to go in on top and we'll get our base layer of pink going on. the pink and white together and get that blended out and then we'll work on the cone for a little bit while this dries and then we'll come back up and do the, like the detailing um the the um actually the pink goes all the way out to there it kind of smashes down that this section right here is the white vanilla ice cream Go ahead and get a nice layer of pink over that white. Let's see if it doesn't give us a soft strawberry color that we're looking for. I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm just skimming the, the skimming the surface of the paper. Working in both directions, kind of in circles, in long ovals. Because it is better to work in a circular fashion with any kind of colored pencil. Um, generally with uh, a true like colored pencil piece, you'd work in tiny, tiny little circles like this. Just gently, 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 one, one section at a time. And that would give you a beautiful, even coverage of color without the line direction showing up. So super teensy, itsy bitsy little circles. But since these are watercolor pencils, we can work a little, a little more boldly and a little more quickly. Hopefully it will turn out the way I want it to. This is a discovery that we're making together, you guys. Okay, that's all that. Then come in gently, gently. My brush is still pretty wet, so I'm not going to re-wet it. And skim that surface and see if it will. Oh, maybe we will re-wet it. Wet, blot, and then test it. There it goes, okay. A little too wet. And kind of go in the direction because the ice cream is a bit textured. Go in the direction that, that you want the textures to be. Like that. Kind of just blend this part out. Like that. How's that looking? Ice cream-esque? Sorta. I like how smooth it looks. 
it looks like it's supposed to be creamy, right? Which is awesome. Sweep this layer this way. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone and let it dry completely before I fuss with it anymore. Clean our brush. And then maybe, maybe we'll go in with white and just, because this is kind of a creamy white, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in a layer of white. I know you guys can't see this, but as you can see up here, it was effective in creating that creamy consistency. And then we might go over this with a light, 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 light coat of this golden color to give, you know how um, sometimes vanilla ice cream, the real vanilla ice cream will look a little, has like chunks of vanilla bean in it and stuff and it looks a little golden. That's what I'm going for. I got a little cough coming, sorry. <coughs> Ooh. This time I got water though. <coughs> sorry about that. There we go. Nice quick coat of weight. And then maybe a coat of white on this paper down here. And it is a little bit cheating to, well not cheating, but to make the tutorial go a little faster. Blocking in a little bit of the base colors and working over the top in color in a watercolor pencil I figured was a good way to to do my very first watercolor pencil piece with you guys and see how it turns out okay now I think actually I think I wanna wonder if I go in Next to the line where it's supposed to glow a little white, a little heavy white line right there. Kind of press them pretty hard. Maybe it'll keep it a little softer there. give me that slightly raised look that's on these ridges. I may have to go in with some bleed proof white to make those marks prominent. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Alright, and then I want to go in with this. This is Marigold. Kind of get in a little, little checkered texturing going on in the shape of the cone. Trying to work pretty quickly. I've been listening to 
an audible book all day today so it feels really quiet in here right now. Sorry about the silence. I was concentrating. Just caught myself. But we're just going through real quick and blocking in all these little the little waffle cone square things. That is what this yeah, it's a waff waffle cone. I forget what the other cone's called. The yellow one that tastes like cardboard. <laughs> when I was a kid I never did eat the cone. I always ate the ice cream and as little of the cone as I possibly could. <laughs> here so I'm not going to press as hard. It's a little lighter texture going on through here. of this, oh not the purple one, this pink one, which I've got out in grenadine in the Castle Arts selection. And just do a little, do I want to do the pink over that right now or do I want to blend that out first? I don't want to blend the cone out a lot because it does actually have quite a bit of texture. So maybe we'll just do a little skim like that. To kind of soften all that. Yeah, that works. Okay. And then we can actually come in with the pink on the hand and get in some I mean, I know Caucasian people don't have pink hands, but as you can tell, fingertips tend to be, hands tend to be, uh, I know mine do tend to get pretty pink and purpley, depending on the temperature and the lighting. So, we're going to go with, I'm going to roll with it, and we're going to put a little pink layer on the hands. Goes with the strawberry ice cream. <laughs> You know, it kind of brings that hand to life a little bit. Gives it a little pop. And I'm ignoring my graphite lines. Um, if you're worried about the graphite lines showing through on your piece, when you trace your piece, just don't trace it as dark. Or use um, a kneaded eraser or any other kind of eraser, honestly. And just gently roll it over the, the graphite. And it'll pick up most of the excess graphite for you so that it doesn't slide around on your page if you're worried about that. I don't mind the lines showing through from my sketches at all. Generally, they end up getting incorporated into the piece. Um, and I don't notice them as I'm working. They get merged into the piece. <clears throat> And I don't want the hand to be as prominent as the cone either, so I'm not going to be as, um, what's the word I would use? I'm not going to be as strict as I would be with the realistic feel of the hand. I do want it to look like there is a hand holding the cone. 
but I'm not too stressed about making it look totally real. So just gently scribbling in a tone of soft pink. like that. I think that's a good start. Oh, the hand is kind of way in the background, isn't it? That's fine. I'm going to put a little more marigold on it as well. Like that. Gently. Gonna be dark enough? I think so. Let's see what I blended out. I don't want to get too dark, too dark too quick. And that's another thing I don't know about colored pencils. Like how many, how many layers can you put down and wash and put down and wash before you um, can't put down any more layers? I know with colored pencils, if I work really light layers one over the other, I can get down seven or eight layers of different colors. It looks so cool too when you do that. It creates such an interesting piece, the combination of the colors together. I'd love to do that. Go ahead and A little more water. Yeah, a lot of water is a bad plan. I can't tell if it's because the paper's <coughs> kind of a smoother watercolor paper than I usually use. I know it's 100% cotton, but. Um, usually my 100% cotton paper is a little more rough. Just do a little glaze over the top. Like that. There. Yeah. And there's the start of our hand. We got a good layer down. I don't know why I was thinking this would only take a half an hour. That was just a silly, silly thought. Alright, our, our strawberry is... It's nice and dry, so we're going to go in here and get in final, like, textures and grooves and bits where the ice cream's kind of... You know, grooved and a little dark in some spots. Like right here where it folds up on itself a bit. A little more deep there. And we don't have to blend out every layer of colored pencil either. We can leave it like that. Oh, that looks awesome. All right. With this 
a little more dark, another divot right here in the ice cream. That purpley color though. Just a little bit of there we go. Light lake violet. To deepen our little shadowy bits. Like that. Grooving in here. That. And anywhere where I put a line down for you guys to trace, that's where the, the ice cream has a a dent or divot or a groove in it from scooping it. So you can go ahead and put in shadows or lines like groove lines like that. A little bit of texturing over here. Nice where it's rolled up on itself right there from here up there so it's dark here and then this top part is light because it's <coughs> kind of rolled out and created a little bump like that okay and then Right here is the underside of this scoop right here. Sweep it in like that. Nice. It kind of rolls around like that. And then there's bits of texture here. So just press down a wiggly pencil around to create it little textures. Yeah, that looks awesome. Huh. And I was worried. Getting cocky. See that? Sweep that up. Like that. Where it's touching that vanilla ice cream right there. Yeah, I dig it. I like how it's turning out. <clears throat> One thing I wish I'd done is that graphite line right here. I wish I'd gotten um, the eraser after that a little bit and made it a little more soft. Cause, ooh, I don't think I can cover it with the, the white. It's too dark and in the page. But overall, it still looks cool. Okay, all right, now for our vanilla part, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take actually the golden one and gently, lightly, softly um, get a little, little, little tiny yellow glow on all these little cracked areas like that. Just a little yellow glow to soften it out. And if you don't like the graphite, I already have the colored pencil down, or the, yeah, the watercolor pencil down. So I don't know if I can lighten that or not. I can, nice, okay. Let's see if we can lighten some of the graphite on the, the white part down here. 
make it less prominent. There we go. Alright, now we can go with our golden and we'll kind of gently do just a little gentle golden color here and there in the white area. There's a shadow right here where they're touching. I'm not going to leave it this bright. I am going to get in there and put a little um, gray in that in just a sec. And I think there's a shadow down here. Camera turned off again. And over here we get a little, little golden shine right here. Kind of on the same plane right here. So we'll merge those together a bit. And there's our little bit there. Okay. And then I'm taking the light, the lightest gray that I have, gently, softly, barely touching the paper, and where there's a, a deeper shadow, I'm going to go ahead and. Drop it in like this, right there. Not too bold, gently, because these are super light. We don't want it to <clears throat> be too bold too fast. I'm going to get a little bit of a dark crisp line right there. Like that. Just a little, little, little. And then a little bit of a dark crisp line. You don't want there to be just one, because that looks like a mistake. So maybe these little cracks up here can have a little shadow bits on them, like that. And then over here, this is in shadow as well. So a little bit of, like, tone that pink with a touch of gray. Not a lot. See how it creates that nice little shadow right there? Dig it. Dig it, dig it. And then, right up here, have another little shadow area. And then in here, kind of goes like that. Good. Good, good, good. And then maybe just a bit there. And just a bit there. Good. Good, good, good. And then down here, on that comb, we have a nice bit there. Into the comb. Gently. This square is in shadow, like that, and this one is shadowed, because the ice cream is hanging over that edge right there, pretty heavily, so it's going to create shadows in that recessed area right there, and then this one would be a little shadowed as well. Not as much, but a lighter touch. Alright, and then because this side of the cone is obviously the our more shadowed side. Um we'll go ahead and drop in a little more just a little more shadows here and there. Just 
definitely up here. Like that. And then be mindful of those bright ridges. Don't just scribble in. Make sure you do, do your squares so that those bright ridges show up. Just inside each little square on this side of the cone is a little less bright. And then it can get brighter as it goes around. Okay, like that. And then over here where that thumb is resting, we've got a little shadow action happening. Like that. Good. That. How's that look? Not too shabby. Alright, so I'm going to get in there with a darker brown. This one is raw umber. And we're going to we're going to give it a little more tinted textury cone like coloring here and there do i know what that means absolutely not but i do feel like these grays need a little bit of you know a little bit of a little tint, a little bit of cover. I don't mind using a gray to gray to do a shadow, but not strictly. Not strictly. That. Got a little bit of crisp edge here and there. Crispity, crispity. Nice, nice, nice. Dig it. Maybe like that. Because your eye will finish that square. It totally will. Without you even knowing, it finishes that shape because it knows the waffle cone is a patterned squares that you know shapes that just it, your brain knows that so it's gonna go ahead and help you out and finish off that pattern for you and then a little lighter on this side because we're gonna go over the top of these with a little bit of a little bit of pink We don't want to get too dark with it. Like that. How's that look? Alright, and then we'll go over the top of that. Just a little brush of pink. What's happening? Oh, not, it's not bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> uh, like that. And then, 
gonna soften all the graphite on this white paper. Like that. the light will reflect around, right? So it doesn't have to be strictly white. It can be colored a bit. Why not? Maybe the light from the source of the light, wherever that might be, is bouncing some of that pink light down here. Why not? It's fun. We're doing it. And then grab our white. That. And this white is not terribly opaque, so I'm not expecting it to do a lot, but I am hoping it will soften out that everything that's going on over here. Makes the paper look more crinkly, a little less pristine. There we go. Good. Glaze that a bit. Ta da! Okay. What else do we want to do? Probably should do a little work on those fingers, but I don't. Don't quite. Put a brightness on those nails. I really didn't want to do a hand to study today, like at all. So, I'll just get in here, do some finishing shadowy touches. And I have done hand studies in the past. Um, hands are very hard to draw realistically. Um, just because there's so much going on, you know. Almost done, you guys. Almost there. The pad of that hand is pretty pink. Just do that. If anyone else is thrown off by the pink hand, if this helps, <laughs> the hand in the reference photo does legitimately have kind of a lot of pink on him. softer light color instead of bright white. It's never bright white, not ever. Okay. 
Okay. I think I'm gonna be done fussing with this now. Cause I could I could just go on and on about this hand, go back and forth and back and forth. But this is not a hand study. This was an ice cream study. <laughs> the study in ice cream and the coniness of it all. <laughs> all right, I'm all done playing with this one, you guys. I hope that you painted along. And if you didn't, if you just watched, I hope you enjoyed. This is our finished piece. Here's our reference photo. Here's our piece. I didn't do that super golden background because I wasn't really digging that, but um, I like the more soft, muted look of this. Here's our little close-up of all of the textures on that cone. That cone looks cool. Looks like you could touch it. And then the paper. And then the hand needs a lot of work, but it's not too too bad. It looks like an impressionistic piece. <laughs> And that is our piece. There we go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!